You may be seated. Amen. Mount Zion, remember to give to our hat and glove drive this winter. Amen? Amen. There is a box in the narthex where you can give hats, gloves, socks, thermal underwear, and blankets to help those in need. Amen? Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week, everybody. Let's all rise in here. Somebody give the Lord a Shabbat in this house.
you yet stand, we're going to get ready for our responsive reading, which will be followed by a morning's hymn. When you have it, please say amen. amen. We praise God. God. We worship God. God. We thank God. God. Amen. Amen. time. We're going to get ready for our scripture readings this morning. Yes, God. Our Old Testament scriptures will be coming from First Elder Moss, followed by Elder Tanisha. Let's receive them by saying amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our reading will be coming from First Kings chapter 17 verses 1 through 9. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, 
and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, Cherith. that is before Jordan. Yes, sir. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. Yes, sir. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. And bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. Because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Serapath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Bless the Lord, everybody. Bless him. I'll be reading 1 Kings 17, verses 10 through 16, and it reads, So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please get me a little water in a jar that I may drink. As she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. But she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have no bread. Only a handful of flour in the bowl and a little oil in the jar. And behold, I'm gathering a few sticks that I may go in and prepare for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Then Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go, do as you have said, but make me a little bread cake from it first and bring it out to me. And afterward, you may make one for yourself and one for your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bowl of flour shall not be exhausted, nor shall the jar of oil be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain on the face of the earth. So she went and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and her household ate for many days. The bowl of flour was not exhausted, nor did the jar of oil become empty according to the word of the Lord which he spoke through Elijah. Put your hands together and give God some shown up praise. We are in the days of antiquity, even before Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There was a man uh, by the name of Job, and Job uh, had been going through some things by the permission of God. And many times when you go through things, people around you will tell you that is something wrong you have done in order for this calamity to have befallen you. But after Job thought about it a little while, Job sat down and he told his so-called three best friends. He said, my witness is in heaven and my record is on high. So say whatever you want to say about me. Talk about me. You don't know my story like I know my story. And you don't know my testimony like I know my, hey, my testimony. But he said, my witness and I, and I need you to tell two or three people, my witness is in heaven. And my record is on high.
peace in heaven.
don't know nothing about this kind of carrying on. But if you go back about 40 years with me, the New York Community Choir, and Arthur Bingham would say it like this, and my record. I wish I had a sanctified church up in here. And Was still here. Mother Kirk would have gone, hey! Can I find about a hundred of y'all just to go, hey! hey! No, baby, just you just can't say, hey. You got a dip with it. Somebody say, hey! 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 I don't care if it kills me, I'm going to have a sanctified church. I'm going to have a holiness church. Touch your neighbor and say, holiness or hell. Now you make the choice. And shake your neighbor's hand and say, am my record? I'm not going to leave this alone until somebody gets it. Somebody just wave your hand and say, go head on. And my record.
Well, y'all talk about Shanda Babasio. Oh, God. And my record. Ah! I'm sorry, y'all. Just one more time. Tell two more people. My record is on high. And say, neighbor, and I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. <laughs> F baby. If I can get somebody to make this confession with me, just lay your hand on yourself and say, in spite of it all, guess what, self? I feel good. Ah. Ah, you ain't got to say self. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And I feel good. My God. I can't speak for you. But I'm so glad to be here today. And if anybody can say it like I can, grab your neighbor and say, it didn't have to be so. But God, and when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul shouts hallelujah.
As we stand in the sanctuary, visitors, if you will please join us for the reading of the word, of the written word of God, as we prepare for what we pray will be the Rima in 1 Kings 17 again. Verse 2, the word of the Lord came to Elijah saying, go away from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Chadith, which is east of the Jordan. And it shall be that you shall drink of the brook. And I have commanded the crows to provide for you. And he went and did according to the word of the Lord. Hmm. Verse 7, it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. The word of the Lord came to him saying, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and stay there. I have commanded already a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please get me a little water in a jar that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he said again, Bring me some bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have no bread only a handful of flour in the bowl and a little oil in the jar. And behold, I am gathering a few sticks that I may go in and prepare it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Touch somebody and say, but God had other plans. And in verse 13, Elijah said to her, do not fear. Do what I told you to do, but make me some first. Bring it out to me. And afterwards you may make one for yourself and for your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bowl of flour shall not be exhausted, nor shall the jar of oil be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain on the face of the earth. May the Lord a blessing and a favor to the reading, the believing, and the receiving of his word I pray I'm asking that when you get home, you will read the entire chapter. Touch your neighbor and say to them, thank God for the oil. Zion, I sense the ghost of God in here today. God says that he would inhabit the praises of his people. And because we have a praising people, God has come down, I do believe. Or rather, you have brought him out. Hallelujah. And I would like for you to grab somebody again and say, thank God for the oil. You know, I got to do this before we go into the word. Touch somebody and say, you know, you're healed today because of the oil. Hallelujah. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the sanctuary. And let's see. Let's see what the Spirit of the living God has to say to us today. Father, I personally magnify you. Use this vessel of clay to your glory. Thank you for these people, God, that you have entrusted to my care for this little while. God, use whatever anointing has been beat out of me to bring them out, to heal them, to deliver them, set the captive free, even to lose prosperity. In Jesus' name, amen. Precious ones, I have in times past down through these 30 years, probably at least seven or eight times, 
dealt with this particular narrative of Scripture. But since we have been dealing with the anointing and the oil and how it is produced, I felt led in my spirit last week to come to this, but it was shifted. And today, if God gives us utterance, we come back to it. Um, I pray that during the course of this word, that somebody's mind will be changed about themselves, their situations, their circumstances, even their health. Somebody's mind will be changed about their bank account, even their job. And how important obedience is. Thank God for the oil. Thank God for revelation. As many of you realize, before I go into where I want to go today, many of you know that I burn incense on prayer. I burn it out here. In my office, I burn it continually. And I walked in my office on Monday morning, and there was no incense. I've already shared this with a few people. And I went and sat at my desk. And when I sat in my desk, I saw in my mind's eye, or now I can say the eye of revelation, I saw some incense under the table in the closet uh, next to the refrigerator in my office. And I got up and I went over there in obedience. I really, I was so sure about it. I was so sure about it. It's, very, it's rare that this happens to me like this. And I looked under the table and I got angry because it was nothing but empty water bottles and dust. And those of you that know me know I don't like a dirty place. Uh, every year I throw stuff out, even in my house. I fill up a whole dumpster. If I haven't used it in a year, I'm not going to use it, so it got to go. People come to my house and go through the dumpster to get the stuff out. And so I got the broom, and I swept it out underneath there. And I said, well, Lord, I guess I missed that. But then I got back down to get some more dust, and I saw a piece of plastic. And when I pulled the plastic, it was a huge stick of incense in the plastic, evidently it had fallen back there. I don't know. All I know is that I now know it was the Spirit of God that told me what I was looking for was under the table. But before I could go after it, I had to see it. And what I am saying to you, there is God has empowered you in such a way until through your obedience, you have creative powers. Let's say maybe it wasn't there before I saw it. I don't know. Chances are it fell down. The point being, it was there. And this, I do believe it was the Spirit of God that led me to look under there. But today, we're talking about a woman who had some things and did not know what she had. Did she have eyes of revelation? I think not. Was she saved? No. Was she a heathen? Yes. And when I say a heathen, I am not saying someone who does bad things. When it comes to Christianity and this great faith, uh, anyone, according to the old church fathers, who do not belong or believe in the Lord Jesus Christ was considered a heathen. At one point in my life, I was a heathen. At one point in your life, many of you were heathen. All of you were heathens, and some of you may still be heathens. But the point being, and I'm going to read a little bit today because I don't want to lose any of this. I, I want to give it to you. Uh, there are some things we have to understand about this particular narrative of Scripture. It is interesting, Tyrone, on the way into service today, I got here early, and I got dressed here at the church. I had some more research to do. And I cut on the radio, and there was another pastor speaking on this same narrative of Scripture. And his take was totally different. And I said, thank you, Jesus. I needed to hear that because his take was what I had given you all probably 15 or 20 years ago. But today, because of your growth, we go to another level. I believe the first thing we must understand about this woman, we have to understand this, and her obedience to the man of God, is simply this. 
and, and hear me, please. God had already prepared her to receive the man of God. Many people in church settings or local assemblies have not been prepared to receive a word from the man of God. And those of you who are believers, and I need you to stay here with me for a moment, those of you who are believers, it is imperative, I have told you this many times, do not wait until you get to service to prepare yourself. You need to be preparing yourself on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. How do you prepare yourself? Baby, worship him. Seek his face. Amen, somebody. We seek so many things. We seek promotions on our jobs. We seek other people. We seek more money. When the scripture says, seek first the kingdom, the kingdom of God and all these other things shall be added to you. And as you seek the kingdom, even the challenges and the bad things that happen in your life will seem better. I know people who've been in holiness or in churches all of their lives, but it seems the slightest thing will throw them off. It will make their whole countenance change. It's because though they've been in church, the church hasn't quite worked its way into them. You see, we got to understand, precious ones, that God is on our side. And, and, and don't misunderstand favor. I hear so many preachers and so many bishops talking about the blessings of God, and I've told you before, with blessing comes uh, possibility. It comes opportunity. With, with blessings come challenges. You see, you are given tasks with blessings, and then God will favor you with what you need to fulfill his purpose on your life. You see, I've been blessed or called to be a pastor. And God enables me to do that by favoring me, hallelujah, with the oil. Yes. Secondly, I need for you to understand that this woman lived in the heart of idol worship. Everyone in her community, probably her too, worshipped Baals. Now, it's important that you understand what a Baal is. A bell was anything you wanted to worship. If you wanted to worship these glasses, you set them up on a table and you light a candle beside it and you worship it. We live in a society where everyone worships bells. Even those of us who are in local assemblies, many of us are polytheistic in that on Sunday and some of you on Wednesday, we are worshiping God, but on Monday, we're worshiping something else. You and I have to understand that those bells in your life, those altars that you have built to worship something else, it is not God's responsibility to tear it down. It's your responsibility to tear it down. The psalmist said, I have made up my mind I have determined that I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm not going to get stuck there, but it is important that you understand that God's praise need to stay in your mouth because if his praise, if his true praise is in your mouth, then every time you open your mouth, you're calling him. Because he said, I will, hallelujah, inhabit the praises of my people. Generally speaking, everybody around this woman worshipped a bell. Oh, now we are in the land of Ahab and Jezebel. And Jezebel hates the prophets of God. She wants to destroy them all. So therefore, she is going to, Queen Jezebel is going to do all she can to keep people in the place where they are worshiping a Baal. Uh, help me, God. 
Queen Jezebel in your life is doing all she can to keep you in the place of worshiping something you should not be worshiping. Now, I do not want you to be confused or perplexed. I don't want you to misunderstand. I'm not, ne not uh, necessarily referring to some drug or some sex sin or something like that. I'm referring, in some cases, to your infirmity. Some of you worship infirmity. Some of you worship challenges. Some of you worship financial difficulty. In other words, you make it so big. Where, where God said uh, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I cannot afford to fear what may be going on in my body. I, I cannot afford to fear what's not in my bank account. I cannot afford to fear who does not like me or who does. Because when I am focused on who likes me and want everybody to like me, then I will be duplistic in everything I do. Over here, I'll be one way. Over here, I'll be another way. But as the Apostle Paul said, I, personally speaking, am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Thirdly, according to verse 24, this woman did not even know if Elijah was a man of God or not, but evidently she had enough God or had heard enough about God uh, to give God a chance. Yes, yes. <laughs> Something that the church does not do anymore. We have become so settled in this society until we are, I believe, challenged with giving God a chance. Don't you know that it takes a risk to believe an invisible God? I have never seen him. I've never audibly heard his voice except through somebody else. But I believe, I believe because I have evidence. When I got saved, he came and lived in me. I believe there are a few hundred of you all who can testify and witness that this great God lives in you. If he died, if he did not live in you, where would you be? Where would your mind be? But didn't he promise to keep your mind in a perfect peace? If you keep your mind stayed on him. I don't want to start preaching yet, but maybe it's difficult living in this society. Oh, y'all got to give me a little time today. I'm beginning to feel this. It's difficult in this society to keep your mind stayed on Jesus when there are so many distractions. And most of the distractions are in your mind. That's why people are not faithful in attending service regularly as if they can stay home and read the scripture. It is so stupid. If you knew the word, then you would know the word says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And how can they preach unless they've been sent? And fourthly, understand that through her obedience, somebody in here needs to hear this if you don't hear nothing else. Through her obedience, to the man of God, God was setting her up and preparing her to receive a favor in the future. Let me try to explain to you that your obedience today may be setting up your breakthrough for tomorrow. Oh, God, help me, God. We know according to the scripture that there were two reasons for her lack, two reasons why she was preparing to die. The first reason was um, she was a widow. 
And in that day, widows did not fare very well. She probably scraped a meager living before the famine came. But now that the famine is here, it is hard for her and her son to exist. And that tells me something else about this woman that the scripture does not speak to, that there are some women and men in this building that need to hear this. Evidently, she was a saver. She learned how to save her money. She learned how to save her stuff because I want to serve notice on you. You don't know when the next famine is coming. It is not that you do not have enough money. You just don't know what to do with it when you get it. This woman had put some stuff aside, and I'm encouraging some of you this morning to learn how to put some stuff aside. When you get that unexpected check, don't spend it. You were not expecting it anyway. Put it aside. When you get that raise on your job, don't go buy a Cadillac. Don't go buy a Mercedes. Baby, a Yugo, a Ikea will get you where you need to go. Just make sure you get a good warranty and try to get four-wheel drive if you can. And quite frankly, it don't have to be brand new. As long as you got learn how to put something aside. You don't always need a new dress. You got 60 of them. You don't, oh, look how y'all looking at me. You got so many shoes, you ain't got room to put them. Oh, you better go through your closet and find some of that stuff and put it aside because you don't know when the famine is coming. Uh, you see, one of the life lessons, though y'all don't like me this morning, one of the life lessons here is that in time of famine, just a little bit will see you through until your breakthrough comes if you have the right little bit. Oh, hallelujah. And I believe the breakthrough came through obedience to the word of God. You, you cannot make up your own rules. Don't you know that the sun shines on the just and the unjust? I don't get it. Why do we always get upset about everything? Everything that happens, no matter what happens, we are ready to throw in the towel. We are ready to give up. Oh, poor me, pitiful me, you big dummy. You need to go to the Cleveland Clinic and walk up and down the corridors and see those people that can't do nothing for you. You need to go over there off of West 25th Street and look down in the projects and see those people that got to stand for hours in the food line. And every time you look at something like that, you need to turn around and say, thank you, Jesus. Because if it had not been for the grace of God, and if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, you need to stop complaining and stop are praising him. You are not that important. I'm going to go through. You're going to go through. But every time we go through, y'all sit down just for a little while. Some more oil is being pressed out. Oh, help me. Help me, Holy Ghost. I feel this. Every time I take my time, huh? let me back up. No. Mm. Hallelujah. I said, mm. every time I go through something that I was not expecting. That's why James said, count it as joy, my brethren. When you encounter various trials, I, 
I don't know, I don't understand why my ministry is not succeeding. I, I think I'm doing what God told me to do. I don't, I don't understand why it doesn't seem like I can get the money for college. I, I know I'm supposed to go. I have come to tell you that you have what you need, but you got to turn it over to obedience. <laughs> you see, there's another life lesson here, and that life lesson is sometimes it will appear that your situation is hopeless before God shows up. I cannot speak to you. I've been this so many times when I was trying to build this church. I didn't think it was going to happen. When I started with 15 people one Sunday, and the next Sunday there was four, I didn't know what was going to happen. All I knew is that I had a word from the Lord. When the Lord told me to go, and how did he tell me? Through a man, a German by the name of Joseph Schultz. He said, Ronnie, get out of Ashland and go start your ministry. It broke my heart when he said that, but I knew he was the authority of God in my life. And so I got on the road and started giving concerts in order to start this ministry. Started it with just a few people, renting from building to building. All I know is that God, God, God had told me through the man of God to start this thing. And right now, today, I don't know how many folk have been saved. I don't know how many have been healed. I don't know how many have been brought back from the dead because somebody obeyed God. Don't you understand that when the situation seems the most hopeless, huh, that is when God specializes in stepping in and doing something about do I have anybody in here that's been in that kind of situation where it looked like it wasn't going to happen, but in the nick of time, touch the neighbor and say, God came through. I can't find nobody, I'm, but I got to back up a little bit. I want you to grab three more people and say, in the nick of time. I mean, this is if you can. This is only if huh? you know what I'm talking about. Grab three people and say, in the nick of time, God came through. Oh. Hey. Say, neighbor, I'm not praising him because everything's all right in my life. I'm praising him because I expect it to be. Say, neighbor, I can't wait till the battle is over. I got to give it up now. So let me back up. I'm backing up. I'm backing up. I got ahead of myself again. Hallelujah. Dr. Butler, <laughs> praise him just because you know it's going to happen. I said, just because you know. <laughs> a dozen of y'all that know that what you've been looking for that is going